I'm back. <laughs> what do we got here? Well, I'm going to let you into a little secret. I'm building a Telecaster. Roy Buchanan, here we... No, I'm not that good. <laughs> Don't matter. It's just arrived. I haven't actually opened the packet yet. You can see this is how it comes in. It's all exciting. Oh, yeah. I look excited. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and show you what we get. Water warmeth neck. Now, listen. Everything tells me don't buy a warmeth neck, but I, I bought one. Last time, it was a right piece of trash, right? But it was about seven years ago, so Tony said to himself, they can't be bad for seven years. <laughs> They'd have gone bust. So I bought another one on the basis that maybe it'll work. So let's have a look at what we've got. Oh look, the controller. Well, the first thing I got was one of these scratch plate things. Look a good idea. I think it's called the Anaconda. Take a good look. And uh, actually I used to know Anna. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to go out with Anna. Anaconda. Yeah, she used to wrap herself around you. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. That's one out of the way. Well, what else do you get? The warmer sticker. Get out of the way. You also get the great big fat bill. Now, I'm not going to tell you where I live or anything silly like that. <laughs> I'm like that. But I can tell you that this thing cost $588 and that isn't threatens. But that actually was because I bought some other bits with it. So the body was $456 in case you ask, which equates to about £300. You might say it's expensive, but actually it isn't. Not for what you get, at least hopefully not for what you get. Let's move that out of the way. Let's get rid of that one. And let's open this body. Let's get rid of that too. Let's open the body. <laughs> Don't you just love this bit? Oh man, you can't see, can you? No, I can. Oh, that's just awesome. Let's look at them. You get them there too. I've seen them before on my videos. They're over there. Oh, well, that's no strat. It's a Telecaster. Yeah, because I like Telecasters. Oh, I told you earlier. Don't worry. Shh, we'll keep you that a secret. Well, it all looks good. If you look at the back of it, you can see. Maybe you can see. It's joined down to two logs. And it's got a bit of stuff on the top. Oh, I might as well show you. Rock and roll. That's what you, you can tell it's off the same piece of wood. Look, there's a piece there and there's a piece there out the same. Ah, what a match. Really good, that, guys. Yeah, that's good. I do. Anyway. It's got a carve out at the back and it's got the thing at the front. It's a bit like a strat, but it's a telly. <laughs> Let's make a telly caster like a strat. Has that been on before? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. I make a telly caster like a Tony McKenzie telly caster. And that's different. Because you can't go buy one of these, can you? Oh, you're there. <laughs> yeah, is he tallowed? Chambered. Chambered. It's all out. Let's get rid of that. Well, it's not that bad. It's not as chambered as some of them that you see. You know, you know what I'm doing, you see. Anyway, back to the guitar. What I want you to do is to make this uh, this guitar. I want you to see straight off what it's going to be like. It's going to be awesome, isn't it? And I've got the gold again. I really like the gold stuff. It goes with the teeth. <laughs> so, I got the warm of neck. Now, listen, I haven't plugged any of this in yet. I'm going to slide that down a little bit. Because here I've got the neck. I've got its paperwork so we can see how much it cost. I'm running out of money, guys. $375. That's about £220. So that's, uh, that's uh, £300 and £220. That's £520. Well, actually, a 
far as guitars go, that's not bad. Especially for one that's going to be like this when it's finished. It's, it's awesome. I wanted to get a neck. It was going to stand out like my neck. <laughs> People want to put their hands around it, but you carry on twiddling your knobs. <laughs> but here we go. I got this neck, and uh, it's a warmth one, like I said. And I, th I thought to myself at the time, I thought, oh, I'm going to make a mistake here. I'll buy one of them necks. I'll have to throw it in the bin. And then go get a fender neck, you know, a real neck. But you know something? I think I was wrong. I think Warmoth have now turned from the ugly duckling <laughs> that they were seven years ago. Trust me, God, are they ugly. They're even more ugly than me. They've turned into a swan. In fact, it's a $375 swan, so let's not worry about that. Let's get the neck out. Ah! Get over there. Now, you can't really see it, can you? Maybe you can see a bit of it now. Let's get that in the camera. Look at that, dudes. Can you see it? Hopefully you can. Yeah. That's going to look cool on the back there. And if, if you look down here, look, you can see how uh, cool that neck is. Wow. Man, it looks great. But is it great? Oh, let's look at the front. I got my Fender logo on there, man. You can't buy a Fender like that, can you? Actually, it feels awesome. It feels like a Fender neck. So that's what they made seven years ago, but they didn't. But there is a few things on this that we're going to have to do a bit of work on, and some of those are the, the holes for the actual for the tuners because I've I got special tuners because I'm a bit like that. Yeah, so the tuners I got, tuners, sorry, for all you American guys, I love tuners, don't you? I like tuners with salad. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Then I spent some more money. Oh man. It's gonna be awesome. I got these. Look at that. Oh, look at the glisten. Oh, it's awesome. Merle Haggard, they said. I never heard of the guy. Well, you know where I come from, if you can't crank it up loud, you, you can't do anything. And Merle Haggard, he might be a great player. He's obviously a Telecaster player, and he's got tuners like this. Let's put them back in there. I've got some more warmer bits and pieces. I've got some coming from others as well. Now, we've also got all the pickups and the wiring and all the rest of the things to do. And uh, we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Because I'm ready to start building. One on one. Rock and roll. Close up. As you've never seen it before. And you know I made that best Fender Strat in the world. Well this is the best Fender Telecaster in the world. Hopefully. Well here I am. Another day. Different clothes. <laughs> or is it another night? Actually it's another night. But I wanted to show you what I'd just done to the neck as the, one of the first things uh, that we're going to do in this sequence of uh, preparing the greatest Telecaster in the world. And uh, it's a fantastic neck to start off with, as you've already seen. What I did, I, I really wanted this neck to be, uh, to look like a fender. So, because this neck actually is a warmth neck, I thought to myself it would be nice to have a Fender logo because that makes them sound better, doesn't it, somehow? Well, it does to me. <laughs> it's just me. It's got a Fender on it, man. Fender. Rock and roll. Fender means rock and roll to anybody who plays these. Absolutely. So, I went away and I got myself a water slide. I won't say who it was. A water slide decal application instructions piece of paper and a decal 
from my friend with eBay. I like them, don't you? <laughs> actually, I don't like eBay at all, actually. The greedy character so-and-so's, go on what you will. And often the price is about, but in this case, uh, this particular guy helped me and he, he made this water slide decal that's the thinnest that you can buy. And when you're finished with it, it ends up something very, very similar to uh, what you'd see on a real one, especially if you went for them custom shop things, you know, the ones that cost all that money. So, what I did, I got my neck, got the decal, I, I bought some of this. Now, this is England, isn't it? So, it's probably not where you are. But don't worry about that. You'll have some equivalent. This thing here is called Halford's Clear Lacquer. And if you're based in England, you'll know what it is. You know where to get it from, too. But if you're not based in England, you want some clear lacquer. It's basically like a nitrocellulose type of clear lacquer. And it's very clear. In fact, when you finish using that, the neck is the same as it was before you started using it, if you're any good. And you don't have to be a genius with that. But one of the first things you've got to do is take some masking tape. This is what's left after the job, because I've finished now. But what I did was to mask up the bottom half of this thing and leave a little square in the end. And that little square in the end had the thing like this, and I just a quick spray. If you actually look carefully in the end of this, you can actually see where it was done. You may not. Uh, just see if you can see anything there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I could poke it in closer, but it hurts. <laughs> if you can't, don't worry. But just down in the end of there, you should see a sort of faint oblong and that's where the uh, stuff went. I can still see it, so you should. That's where the stuff went, just so I could test whether that uh, clear lacquer would affect the clear lacquer that had already been applied to this by Warmoth. And you know what? It doesn't affect it. In fact, when it's done, it, it's hard to know where it's been done. It's that good. So, what did I do then? Well, I took my water slide decal, dipped it in water because that's what it needs to get removed from the backing paper. What you do is you, you, you soak it in there. I didn't do all this on film because it's just too much trouble but I, you soak it in there for 20 to 30 seconds and it comes loose on the back. So you keep it on the paper, pull it back out, slither it onto your neck, hold one end and pull the paper out. And as, you, as you've done that you then take some uh, toilet tissue and just dab it very, very carefully. And when you finish doing that and you've got all the water out and things like that, it'll still look uh, not perfect. But don't worry about that. Just give it 24 hours and come and have a look in 24 hours and you'll find it's as smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> I haven't looked at many babies' bottoms lately, but don't worry. <laughs> I'm getting worse here. I've got nothing else to equate it to. But it's smooth. Let's put it that way. It's as smooth as this. No, it isn't. <laughs> Anyway, you put it on there, you leave it 24 hours and then you come back and back to and you, you mask the rest of the neck and mask it really well all around these edges all around the back, all down here, all down this anywhere where you don't want this, this stuff to go because it don't come off too easily well it does but you've got to now do it anyway, there's the decal you can see the decal that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. And and what I did is I, I got it masked off and I put it down over there and I shut this thing for oh, five minutes. And then I just give it a quick coat. And then I left it for 20 minutes and then I give it another quick coat. And what you've got now is you can just about see the decal. You know, the outline of it. Like you could on some of those old fenders. You've seen them, same as I have. Well, I wanted that sort of effect. I didn't want it flat with the surface completely. I wanted it completely protected, but just so that it's got that little bit of a sort of rim around it, you know, where Fender cut it in those days. And that's exactly where I've got. This is this is about 25 minutes since I uh, did the spray. So what you do is you peel it all off once it's dried enough. It's got to stand 24 hours then. But what I did, well it was still sort of, and it still is a bit wet, 
it's hard enough now so it's not going to run but it's still slightly wet what you do is I got some uh, turpentine substitute if you know what that is turps some people call it I don't know what you call it in America or Russia or Japan but you'll know what I mean that stuff you wash your paintbrushes in right turps turpentine substitute so I get a little bit on a rag and just go around this edge this edge here really carefully and you'll see where some of the overspray was where it had sort of well, what happens is it sort of leaks down the edge of the masking tape and that's a really good way to get it all off while it's still tacky and it's gone it's just as if it had never happened see that nice but then the next problem is going to be on the back of this neck I'm not sure I've mentioned it before but I've got the sort of tuners that need two holes on each one and what I've got to do is masky tape over it line them all up press them on and you'll see two little indentations for each one which we're then going to drill out nice oh, it's all been finished now but it's one thing you got to do to make this neck into something that's really cool. I'm going to let you into a Tony McKenzie trade secret. One that I know you don't know. Now, I've assembled all the components and uh, this is really going to make a guitar, well, aged. Yeah, we want to do a bit of that, right? It's going to be as aged as me. <laughs> that's a long time. You've got to start up with the right ingredients. Now, be serious out there. This one is called Wild Turkey Rare Breed Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 750 mil, and it's uh, it says it barrel proof. Well, what that means is it's a bit like neat alcohol. Oh. Then you got to take a glass, or you're going to need a rag. We've got the neck. Now listen, this is an inside secret. I don't want this getting out, guys. So that what we do is we... You can open the rare breed, and they don't make many of these. I think it's, uh, it says here, 54% alcohol. Oh, so you just got to put some of that in there. A bit like that. Now remember, you don't need much of this. You know, these necks are... They don't like water. Well, it's 50% not. So you got the rag, and basically, when you get this, what you're going to do is you're going to rub it on all over, like this, all over where it's been sprayed, over the bit that matters. It's like this. It's going to change your life. Are you ready? I'm going to give you a demo. You get it like that. You get the rag. But he's drinking. <laughs> Man. That neck looks better already. <laughs> well, <laughs> needless to say, I, I was joking. Don't go and do it. Just drink the whiskey. It, uh, it does a much better job of you than it would do of the neck. Anyway, back to the real deal. What you've got to do is you're supposed to flat this down, but you know, with sandpaper and the rest, and buff it up with a buffer. I mean, you could get them one of them wheels and you could do that. But I don't bother doing any of that. All I did, which I talked about before, I think, was to just clean around the edge. Important to clean around the edge. About an hour after you've finished spraying, it gets it really just the same as it was before it was sprayed, which is nice. And uh, it's just like original now. But I just want to show you something else about that, uh, that Fender logo. Just before we get away from that, we never come back to it actually. So, uh, hold on a sec. So I've got this book. You've probably seen it. The Fender Telecaster, The Life and Times of the Electric Guitar That Changed the World by Dave Hunter. Oh, 
I had to go buy it just like you will. But don't worry, I only wanted one picture. I've got this Merle Haggard guy. He looks a bit haggard now compared to what he did when he was younger. <laughs> like me really. But don't worry, I only wanted him for one thing. I don't know anything about Merle Haggard so uh, excuse me if, uh, if you think he's great. I can't tell you if he's great. Don't make no difference, it's not my style. But what is my style? Is this to get this where I need it. When I was fitting this logo I noticed that uh, on a lot of the Telecasters in here the logo varies up and down the neck a little bit and I wanted to get it as sort of authentic really as, uh, as I could find. An old Merle here has got a Telecaster which is really nice and clear and I can tell you now, if you can see that, it's pretty nigh on the same position as his is. So that's how I figured out where to put the logo in the first place. Clever, eh? Let's get rid of the book. Anyway, but that book is actually quite useful for other things. As you're going along uh, doing your Telecaster thing, as we are, you can go and look in the book and uh, see one or two different things off different Telecasters that you might want to include in yours. Oh, my hat's not straight. Oh! <laughs> Whose idea was this thing on? <laughs> well, anyway, you can go through the book and have a good look at the things in there. And it talks about a lot of different guitarists like Roy Buchan and, and uh, I don't know, loads and loads of different guys. But uh, it's all interesting stuff. So that's why I bought the book. Great for logos. <laughs> Let's have a look at these uh, tuners. Yeah, like I said, bought these on eBay. These are the Merle Haggard ones off the uh, Fender Telecaster. It's probably a custom shop jobby. I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's got the little nice bits on the top and stuff like that. But uh, there's one problem. This neck was made for the uh, the old-fashioned style of uh, tuners. And you know the new style has these two little pegs on here. So the problem is that when you go to fit this in here, needless to say, there's no holes. You can see, if you look careful, that it's sort of raised see that? Well we've got to drill two holes for each one and of course if you drill them wrong it could be off like this or off like this or off like that if you drink too much of this. <laughs> I wouldn't do that would I? <laughs> so we've got to get them right. Uh, well there's a nice easy way of doing it or at least this is the Tony McKenzie way of doing it. I haven't read any books on how you do any of this I'm just like you. But well, I've had this idea when I was asleep the other night because I think about things like this when I'm asleep. I'm nuts. Well, here they are. Let's move them out of the way for now because they're all the same. Let's take this one back out. And I'm going to get my favourite material. Mm. Tape. Masking tape, indeed. And you tear a piece off like that. Remember to use your teeth. And you just stick it on there, basically like that. That's a clever idea. You can see that, it's just stuck on there. Where can I get this? Let's so you can see. There we go. Now, the theory is this. If you just bob a hole in each of them. Okay, I've got the first one in loose. Well, that piece of uh, tape actually holds these in, which is quite nice, no screws on there or anything like that. So you can sort of have a look where they go without actually making any holes or anything. So I'm just going to put the rest of these in here and then we'll talk about what we do next in a moment. Just hold up. One of the things when you're doing this, don't leave too much masking tape inside that hole else you will have trouble getting these in and out and you need to get them in and out a few times. So. So just make sure that you clear out most of that so that they just slide in and just they're held in position. Now what the trick is, is 
is to take a straight edge across the bottom here because you can see the flat which they are on these see that a straight edge down here and then gently press these with a bit of force onto the back of the neck and what you actually do is you actually mark the masking tape where each one of those two holes actually touches the masking tape what we're then going to do is take them all back off mark them little holes with a bit of a pen and then drill them making sure you don't drill right through <laughs> that could be fun and uh, just deep enough so that we can refit these they will be straight and we can just put these nuts and bolts on on the front now if you look close enough you'll actually see where I've put the pen markers from the little indentations of when we push those uh, tuners in there Look really careful you should be able to see them okay everybody got that nice and simple that's what we want don't be sitting there trying to measure it all up in some ridiculous way and what we need to do now is you can see that the the size of those holes isn't very big it must be oh I would say three sixteenths of an inch deep and probably an eighth of an inch wide that's all so all we really need to do is do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then we can peel this off and fit the uh, the tuners oh you're back I've just taken this off and I've just drilled the holes you can see them nice well that is nice and easy I've got stuff all over here I'm gonna have to clean all this up now so what I'm going to do is just fit these in, fix them on, and then we can forget this part of the headstock. It's all going to look good when it's done, I think. Those are probably going to be okay. I wouldn't say that they're absolutely perfect, but they're certainly pretty good. I remember I'm just the ordinary guy. I'm not one of these Muthia types. I'm just like you. So if I can do that, I've got to tie them up here. And I can line them up pretty much like that, if you can see that. That's not bad, actually. You can see it there. It's not bad. Well, and there's no holes poking out the back, by the way. <laughs> Which you could have if you're not actually very good at it, like me. Uh, but I didn't get any holes, so I'm just going to tighten the nuts up and then uh, we're ready to move on with the guitar. This can be good. But do remember... Don't drill all the way through, else you can have holes sticking out the front here and no amount of washes on the front is going to help you. You're just going to want to burk. <laughs> so, get that right wherever you do. Very important. It's got to look straight. It's got to be straight. And it is straight. That's quite good, really, for me. <laughs> That's probably the best one I've done to date. Of the type. Well, funnily enough, I didn't do any others. They were already pre-drilled because I've got Fender X. Uh, uh, one last thing on that. Uh, I did talk to Warmoth about that. And I actually showed him these uh, tuning pegs or tuners. And uh, Warmoth said, yeah, great. All you got to do is drill the holes now. <laughs> so there was no amount of convincing that, uh, hey guys, drill me these holes. It looks like they don't do that. Or it appears that way from what I do. So, well, guess what? We just did it. I'm going to lock the nuts up like I said and then we're going to move on uh, to phase two. Well actually it's the next phase, it's probably about the tenth phase and don't forget to have a little sip of this on your way through because mmm mmm oh, I'm not used to that stuff. Yeah I'll see you in a minute. It isn't a Fender by the way but it is Fender license so I suppose I'm allowed to do that aren't I? I don't know. Doesn't matter if I aren't, it's only for me. I don't sell them. So, well, what have we got next? Well, moving the neck aside, because I'm like, oh, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, what pickups I'm going to use. 